Four. Okay. Cool. And what do I know about these angles? There's no. They're not parallel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if this is angle one, is there another angle you know that's equal to angle one? Angle, sure, let's call it angle four, down here, okay? And then also we know that two and three are equal, okay? Why do we know this? Okay, we, we went over this a little bit last, last time. So what is angle one plus angle two? Uh, yeah, they equal 180 degrees, right? Okay, how about angle 4 plus angle 2? 180. 180, right? Okay, using the reflexive property, can I rewrite this? Yeah. All right, how does it look? Just this statement Equal. here. Just this statement here. Angle Which one's the reflexive? Angle two. One eighty equals. Or uh, symmetric. My bad. One eighty equals. Exactly. One eighty equals angle four plus angle two. Okay. So. That one of you guys had the transitive, right? So, if A equal okay, 1 plus 2 equals 180, and 180 equals 4 plus 2, then right, so if this is my statement, if This equals B, and B equals C, then A equals C. A equals C. Can we write this down? Okay. Hold on. Okay. And if I go and rewrite that, it looks like angle one plus angle two is equal to angle four plus angle two, right? That's my transitive property. If angle A equals angle B, and angle B equals angle C, then angle A equals angle C, okay? I'm just making it look a little weird here, okay? Now, what do you notice in this equation? Can it be simplified? Yeah. How? Because two. Two angle twos, right? It's on both sides. So how do I do that? I'm going to just subtract angle two from both sides. Okay? These guys go to zero, these guys go to zero, and I just have angle one equals angle four. Right? Now, Similarly, I can make a similar argument for two and three, right? Yeah. I would just need to switch my addition of 180, addition into 180, right? Okay. So let's let's make this a little bit more complicated. Or actually, right before that, we call these vertical angles. Angle one and angle four, and angle three and angle two. Vertical angles are from an intersection the angles that don't share don't have a common side. They don't share a side. All right, and uh, somebody that was in this room a little bit uh, before your guys' time came up with this drawing for it that I I love it. Before our time? Like before we were born? No, like pre 
two years ago. Vertical angles. I think that's a really good way to remember this. Are you joking or do you want me to actually point it out? Yeah. Yeah. Vertical angle. Okay. Yeah. I really like that. That really helps me remember this vocabulary word. Can you write that down? I would write down at least the vertical angle of feet. This might be an important piece at some point. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more, say no more. All right. So, let's, let's make things interesting, right? With two, two lines, we have only four sets of angles. But if I have another set, we get a little bit more interesting, right? Okay. Let's say we want these to be parallel. And the symbols that show that they're parallel are little angles, little triangles on the lines. Okay, so now what does this angle need to be for these guys to be parallel? Anybody got a guess? How about would those two lines be parallel? Or? Yeah. The angle needs to be 160. Let's not talk about numbers, how about color? Because right here, red and blue. Yeah, we've got red equals red, right? Blue equals blue. So, you get that? Yes. Okay. So, the inside of a triangle, what do they add up to be? Oh, Not quite. Uh, is she going to bring it down? No uh, problem. Okay. So what does the inside of a triangle add up to be? Any triangle. We've talked about this. 180. Okay? Of any triangle Oh, because you got that straight straight line. Right? Okay. So if I don't want these two lines to intersect, right? If they intersect, what do I have? Okay, I have one intersection, I have two intersections, I have three intersections. What do I have when I have three intersections, three lines? Five intersections. A triangle. Okay, right? So if I want these not to intersect down the road somewhere, what do I have to make these two angles equal to? 180. Yes, exactly. Okay? If I make them bigger than 180, they're not going to intersect, right? But the problem is they're going to intersect over here. Wait, so if you make them 180, they're going to intersect? Yeah, so I need to make them 180. So you what adds together, to hold on, what adds together to be 180 in my drawing here? Uh, what colors add together to be 180? Red and blue. Yeah, red plus blue equals 180. Okay, so what color does this need to be? Blue. Blue. And similarly, those are there. Okay, using vertical angles. 
So if these two are parallel, I can say that 7 is equal to 2. I can say that 3 is equal to 6. I can say 8 is equal to 4. 1 is equal to 5. There's a lot of things I can say here. And this becomes extremely helpful. Okay, and you might imagine that this is helpful when people are building houses. And so they've got all of those parallel joists, right? That I know if I put a if I put a beam across it, it's going to have the same angle here as it does here, as it does here, as it does here, as it does there, right? That starts becoming helpful. Okay, so we got red plus blue equals 180. So I strongly suggest you guys color code this. If you need colors, I can provide them. But that's the major basis of our notes here. Now beyond this, do you think the, the math textbooks or the ACTs are going to call these red and blue angles? No, they've got some pretty high-minded words for these angles, okay? And I'm going to just break down really quickly how that works. Okay. Okay. If they're basically... No, that's not the baby bet. Okay. Are you going to paint the inside of your house with the same type of paint that you paint the outside of your house? No. 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 Is the answer right? You want one to be weather resistant, and then the other one really doesn't need to deal with the fact that snow is blowing all around, right? So, what do we call that inside paint? Anybody know? Anybody painted houses? Interior. Interior paint, right? So anything between here is what we call interior. Okay, so what do you think we call it on the other side? Exterior. Exterior, right? And there are two exteriors, right? Because outside is everything that's not inside. Outer two. Right? Okay, so then we have this idea that you're either same side or alternate. And I claim this alternate uh, is basically like a zipper that you alternate one at a time. Okay? And that's where the word it, it comes from. So this one is a little bit harder to draw because you have to draw it four different ways. But we can say that angle two our same side and angle Five and angle four are alternate. Okay. So with this, we can create this table. You're either same side. Alternate. And similarly, you are either interior or exterior. And this is how the labeling convention is made for these angles. Okay? So you have here, same side, interior. Okay, can two of you, or red sky, can you tell me two angles that are same side interior? 
Four and six, right? What are the other same side and in interior? Three and five. Four, six, five, three, right? So what can you tell me about all same side interior angles? What do they add up to be? 360. 180. 180. Right? We've got it right in the blue. Okay. So let's take a look at this one. Same side exterior. What are those? Can you give me an example of those? about one angle from this intersection and one angle from this intersection. So you are right that both 7 and 8 are exterior, but we want to we want to talk about one angle from the top intersection, one angle from the bottom. 7, seven and one. 1, right? We need the same side of the transversal. Okay? And that's what this line is called here. This guy is called the trans Okay, so same side exterior, I've got 7 and 1 and 2 and 8. So what can you tell me about same side exterior angle? They equal 180. They equal 180. So what can you tell me about same side angle? In They'll always be cool. Maybe he screwed up. All right. So, how about alternate interior? Okay. Can you tell me? Great. Can you tell me two alternate interior angles? One back and in. Remember that we're going with ones from different. So those are same side, right? They're on the same side of the transverse board. Three and six. Three and six and four and five. Four and five. Okay. So what do we know about the same side interior angles? They're the same angle. They equal each other, right? So how about our alternate interior angles? They equal each other. So what if it was blue plus blue, it would still equal 180, right? Well, blue plus blue doesn't equal 180. Yeah, it's blue. Right? Blue is obviously less, less than half of, of 180, right? Yeah. So if I put two of them together, it's going to be less than 180, right? And here, if I do, with the way this is labeled, red plus red will be bigger. 180. All we know is that red plus blue equals 180, blue equals blue, and red equals red. So alternate exterior. What are those angles? All right, we need to go outside exterior angles, right? And they need to be on opposite sides of this. Seven and two and one and eight. So alternate exterior angles are also equal. All right, now I ask you, what about this angle pair? How about angle two and six? Are those guys what? 
Well, one's ex exterior, one's interior, Which right? Reversible. Yeah. yeah, so that's the one type of angle we haven't talked about. Pair. Nope. We call them corresponding. Okay. Corresponding in general means like you're in communication with. Or, you know, three on a clock corresponds to east, right? Does that make sense? That if I have a clock, three is over here, this is also east. If I was talking about a compass. So three corresponds to east. Yeah. So, so three and E, they're corresponding. They, yeah, they correspond. So our last group of angles, so these are all pairs, right? We have same side interior pair. We have alternate interior pair. We have alternate exterior. We have same side interior. And then the last type of pair we have is corresponding angles. And these pairs look like two and six, seven and three, one and five, and eight and four. So just same colors from different sides. Yeah. Okay, so so if two angles aren't parallel, this gets back into our logic thing, right? If two lines aren't parallel, right? Parallel lines never intersect, right? If two lines aren't parallel, what do they do? They intersect. Okay? What about these two lines, though? Are these parallel? No, they're not. Okay. So that was kind of a trick question there. We call these kind of lines skew. But they're not touching. Yeah. Parallel lines actually technically have to lie on the same plane. So that a flat surface needs to be able to contain them. So what if it was like this? They met, see? Oh, wait, you know what I mean? Like they're are they on the they're same plane? Parallel, but they're not on the same plane. No. Yeah, if they're not parallel and not on the same plane. No, what if they're oh, parallel? Like if they're parallel, parallel but not okay. On the plane. If they are not on the same plane and do not intersect, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Then they are called skew. S K E W. Okay. Yeah, like view askew. Right? So. No, no, we've got 10 minutes left. Okay, so you can go ahead and shut that off.